Hi everybody, it's Jen again with Unchained Crochet. All excited today. We have family over. Yay! Say hi. <laughs> hi everybody. This is my daughter Beth. She's my oldest. And this is my granddaughter Amora, my youngest granddaughter. My younger granddaughter. I got two. <laughs> and uh, they're wearing their matching vest that I made them last year. Was that Christmas or fall? I think it was fall. Um, yeah, I think it was fall. Yeah, you gotta talk a little louder. Um, <laughs> but Beth has been over doing mom's hair uh, today. I don't think mom wants to be in the My video. My mom's here. Your mom is here. We're all here. It's a party, sissy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's all excited because she got her lip gloss on. <laughs> um, so today we're gonna talk about proportions. And I'm going to show you how to measure on Beth, and we'll talk a little. She said, hi, everybody. I'm very happy. <laughs> so we're going to talk a little bit about proportions later on in the video after Beth and Amora are gone. <laughs> um, but we're also going to talk about, um, you know, making things for children. So uh, they have their mommy and me vest on. And wanted to wear those today. Yeah. You're so cute, sissy. Is this for me to put on? Uh, yes. Yes, I know. She tried to give me her lip gloss earlier. Okay. How's that? Huh? Yeah. Is it pretty? Is it good? Yeah. Is mommy yeah. pretty now? Yeah. Okay. I, I say this. You do that? Yes. You do it. You're wiping yours off. You do a good job putting your lip gloss on. Yeah. She loves lip glosses. Mom just got her like... <laughs> 20 of them, was that how many? <laughs> yeah, so what happens when mom's a hairstylist. You like hair and makeup. Yep. At two years old. <laughs> so, Amor is our little star of the show, stealing the show today. <laughs> All right, so we're going to pause here and uh, get the tape measure, and I'm going to show you how to do some measurements. I do your step us. Amor, do you want to tell everybody bye-bye? Bye-bye. Blow them a kiss. Bye-bye. <laughs> She's Love gonna go this. color with Grandma Lawson now. Ah, oh, perfect. <laughs> so sweet. Say, showing off our. Say, showing off our best. Yeah. No. <laughs> Maybe we're gonna start on that. <laughs> it's okay. We're not. We're not gonna worry about editing. She. She wanted to show off her best. So they look so classy in them. I love them. Those, by the way, are made with the Lion Brand Ferris wheel. It's a single ply, uh, like roving type yarn. Uh, very affordable. They sell it at Joann's, Walmart, and Meyer now has it as well. It's a little cheaper at Walmart and Meyer than Joann's, unless it's on sale. This one Use goes a 20% off coupon. My, right above my knee. Too. Yeah, it so goes nice right above the one. knee. Yeah, and this pattern is um, the Woodland Gypsy pattern. Um, you can find it through Pinterest, and it won't, well, right now, when I looked it up, it didn't take you down a rabbit hole or a dead link, so um, I, I really enjoy doing that pattern. Without the bend Yeah, there it is without the belt. Scooch toward the desk a little bit best so they can get this a close-up. Yeah. It's got kind of a side saddle boxy stitch section there you can see again the colors of the ferris wheel are just gorgeous and um on this piece as well as my other daughters um when you're doing an adult size garment with this particular color changing yarn it's best to do um two or four panels so i did this in two panels and just kept going after you know for, it's just two two panels, two rectangles put together, sewed up the side, leave an armhole. Um, but you do two panels, that way the back has got two sections and it works great for that short of a color change. That way you get big hunks of color as opposed to skinny stripes. So that's that. Okay, so we're going to be measuring Beth, and this is going to serve uh, as guidance for you when you are trying to adjust a pattern or just know your measurements so you know what sizes to pick. And later on in the video, I'm going to talk ratios, and we'll visit a website I have used in the past with knitting to help adjust patterns for my size. 
So I'm going to use Beth as a model here. Scooch up here for me. And notice the tape measure I'm using is a regular sewing tape measure, not a retractable one. Um, you can use that if you want, but you're more likely to drop it and it's going to retract on you. Um, unless you keep clicking and locking and clicking and locking. So this is less, a lot less fidgety. So where you want to measure is the, the biggest part of the bust. So at the peak of your bust, you want to, you, you don't want any ease. You just want to get the actual measurement of the bust. And most of my garments are looser fitting, but if I were doing a raglan, see if you pinch it and pull it, and then let it naturally release when she takes a breath. She's 41 inches and a quarter. So, using that measurement, we're going to talk ratios a little bit here. We'll get more in depth with the math later. So, she's 41 and a quarter. So, her neckline, I would want to be half of her bust. So, 41 and a quarter, we'll just round it to 41. Half of 41 would be 20.5. And now her arms should be 40% of her chest measurement. Turn toward me, baby. So I'm going to measure her upper arm. And I'm getting 14 there. She's not as big armed as I am. 14 and a half. A little looser there. Almost 14 and three quarter. Lucky you. <laughs> So 14. They're not small though. <laughs> I, I have my calculator on my phone. I'd have to calculate it out. But you would then take your arm measurement um, and divide it by your chest measurement. So 14 uh, and three quarter. 14.75 is, is equals divide in math. 14.75 divided by her chest measurement. And it should tell you that that is x percentage of her chest so it should be 40 percent don't quote me on it <laughs> i'm just kidding but that's what i learned on knittingfool.com when i was knitting mm -hmm. and i could easily adjust my own patterns that way if they had several sizes and hey you're not on that list you can adjust that way i'm going to teach you how to upsize and downsize um just the basics um, we're not going to go through a whole pattern um, if someone needs help with a particular pattern and I can help you leave a comment below and I'll see what I can do in my reply. Okay, for this portion of the video, we are going to knittingfull.com. And this is what their website looks like. If you go to sweater patterns, they have a built-in um, generator. You can get into that on your own, but I'm just going to take you through the basics. I want you to understand ratios. Scroll down past the start download for the PDF converter. Um, I think that's just an ad. Um, you can see here that they have different sweater styles to choose from. Um, the top down raglan is one of my favorites. That works great with the half double crochet for the yoke and the bust right here. And then you can get into lace for your sleeves if you want straight sleeves or whatever. Um, you can change that, but you can use this portion for your ratios. Um, let's blow up the drop sleeve Gansey. Right now we're talking general body ratios, and then I'm going to show you how I do my math. I don't use this site anymore because I learned what I needed to learn, um, and I don't generate patterns, so I just create as I go. So this tells you about the percentage method. The percentage method of creating a sweater pattern uses the chest measurement plus an allowance for ease of fit as a basis for all other measurements. This is what I go by. The chest measurement is treated as 100%. So we'll get into a little bit of math. Um, but So your chest measurement would be the 100% right here. Hope you can see that. Let's zoom on in. So you got 100% for your chest. Um, I treat the neck opening as 50%, although they say 40% here. That is for a Guernsey sweater, like a fisherman's sweater. So the neck opening, I do 50 of your chest. And then the arms, arms, this is a Guernsey. Again, a Guernsey has a sleeve that is 
sharply tapered. I usually do 40% for my arms. And you can measure your arms and compare them to your chest and see that your arms should be about 40%. Um, and always take into account the ease that you want. If your bust is 36 inches and you want 2 inches of ease, you're going to go up to 38. So it would be 38 inches would be your math that you're plugging in. Um, so this site is really great. I haven't been on it for a long time. This is my first time today for probably six to seven years, I think, if not longer. Um, I just learned what I needed to learn. Um, so the percentage method and the chest measurements treated as 100%. All other measurements are some portion of that chest measurement. So you may prefer or need the body of the arms of the sweater to be a different length than that which is calculated by this method. It's acceptable to work a few extra rows or a few less rows in the body or the arm length. So, um, you know, this is for knitting, but you can learn what you need to learn about ratios from this website. Body ratios. And... Um, it all boils down to Fibonacci sequence, God's golden ratio. Um, if you take, for example, um, your height, measure your height from the top of your head to the floor, and then measure from your belly button to the floor, God's golden ratio, your belly button to the floor length divided by your height, um, it is like 1.618 or should be. Um, that's a fun little trick you can show people. But um, they call it uh, the number of phi, I think. That's how it's pronounced, F-I. Um, and that is uh, phi in math is God's golden ratio. And you can see that in the sunflower. Um, I wanted to show a little video, but I don't want to break anybody's copyright. Um, but you can see that in the sunflower seeds, how they spin out. That ratio, the growth ratio of bamboo. Um and the bamboo lines, you can see it if you look at live growing bamboo. Uh, a nautilus shell, um, the human ear, the way that it spins out. And the golden ratio is Fibonacci sequence, phi. Uh, so the growth ratio, uh, the numbers of Fibonacci um, are, are stable growth rate, um, meaning that it start and it's only stable up to like 13. So it starts at 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, and then you add 1 and 2, that's 3, then 2 and 3 is 5, 5 and 3 is 8, 8 and 5 is 13. Beyond the 13, it's not really um, a straight 1.618, it changes a bit. But that ratio, if you take those two numbers and everything, it should come up to the golden ratio. Um, you can look up illustrations of that. Fibonacci sequence. So here, right here in the middle of the screen. Let's pull that up, see if we can get it blown up a little bit. Math is fun website has it on there right here. Here's a great one. This is so much fun. I love math. So right there, there, there it is. You see the seashell pattern. Um, so it starts real little right there. I don't know if I can make this any bigger. Nope. Maybe visiting that site will help. Here is a site. This is mathisfun.com. And it talks about the Fibonacci sequence, which is what I'm using for my giveaways, um, my hand knit shawl giveaways. Um, when I reached 100, I gave away a shawl. I have to ship that off tomorrow. Um, when I reach 200, I'm going to give away another shawl. These are hand knit shawls I made that I don't wear because. They're just uh, too drapey for me. I like to wear them as scarves, and they don't have the body I like, and they don't wrap around me well. So since I need ample coverage, <laughs> um, I'm going to give them to homes that will appreciate them more. Uh, and people who I know will care for those items. <laughs> so there is the, the series of numbers, 0, 1, 1, 
1 plus 1 is 2. So you just add the number before it. 2 and 1 is 3. 3 and 2 is 5. 5 and 3 is 8. 8 and 5 is 13. Well, 13 and 8 is 21. 21 and 13 is 34. Beyond a certain point, it gets to where it, it kind of does not keep following that pattern. Uh, so the 2 is found by adding the two numbers before it. 3 is found by adding two numbers before it. 5 is 2 plus 3 and so on and so on and so on. The next number uh, after the 34 would be 55. It's that simple. So that was just something I wanted to show you. Oh, look, they got pictures. There is that pattern in the sunflower. Math is fun. Guy's golden ratio. And you can even find uh, examples of his golden ratio in the facial structure. So that gets into more math and how it's written for Fibonacci. So that's a lot more complicated than you need to know. So we're going to get out of that. It's more complicated than I need to know. But here we're back to the Guernsey. Um, so that's what I use here. And I'm going to shut my screen off now. Because I want to show you a little bit of math I worked up. So here. Sorry, I, I don't want to go through putting the math on this screen with text, although I know how to do that now. Um, I just feel like I could better explain it this way. See if you can follow my pen light. So right at the top, for upsizing a pattern. All right, say the pattern is 34 inches and they don't give any other sizes. You just got 34 inches. Well, what if you're someone who has a 52 inch bust? Then what? You're out of luck. You can't use that pattern. No, no, no. Uh, if, if a pattern is just that one size, you're going to have to look at that stitch repeat and see if that's something that you think you can modify for yourself. It's, if it's complicated and it has set in sleeves or something weird like that with crochet, you're going to have quite the challenge ahead of you. But say the pattern has 34 inches for a small and then the next size is a, is a, a 48 inch or something. That, your number is not on there, basically. So it has other multiples and you know the multiple that the stitch is done in. They've given the multiple plus two chains or whatever. Multiple plus a number of how many chains. So you know your size. You've measured yourself your 52 inch bust. All right, see what ease the pattern has. If it's the ease amount of ease that you want, then go ahead and stick with those numbers they've given. And I would go with like the one that's closest to your size. So say they have a 48 inch, you could pick 48. But for this example, we're going with the 34 inch. Your 52 inch bust, you would take the 52 is blank percent of 34 inches. We're writing it as a math sentence. 52 is blank percentage of 34 inches. Is in math means you divide. Of means multiply. So depending on which number you're missing, that would determine if you multiply or divide. But the way we've written it out here is your measurement is blank percent of 34 inches. Because this number is bigger than that number that they've given, I've started with your number. So we are going to divide 52 divided by 34, or written this way, 52 divided by 34. And then you see that you get 1.529, and just round that to 1.53, which would be 153% bigger. So um, that those two numbers, oops, sorry. You get the gist of it. And um, you could then take this number here, 1.529, round it to 1.53. So if they're starting with 60 chains, take your 60 chains or whatever stitch count they, they tell you, and you multiply it by 1.52. 
to get how many stitches you would need. Then what I would do is do whatever number is closest and works with the, their stitch pattern uh, requirement, that X stitches plus two, you know, um, choose whatever would work with that math. So if, say they have a, um, a four, a uh, multiple of four plus chain two. Um, then that's what you would want to see what's closest to that and comes out closest to your number. I don't know if that makes sense to you all. I can work on this and try to explain it easier. But this is how I do it if I need to change the size of something or needed to. I don't do it so much anymore since I design my own things. Uh, so here's another example. This is for downsizing. The pattern's 48 inches and you are 36 inches. So say you find a plus size pattern you like or something oversized and you want to downsize it. So then you would say 36 is blank percent of 48 and you get 0 0.75 or 75%. 36 is 70, we're writing out as a sentence, 36 is 75% of 48. Make sense? So that is what I use to determine. Mainly, I don't do this so much, adjusting pattern sizes. I usually look at the multiples and just add some multiples. That's the great thing about crochet. Um, more or less, I use what we just visited with the um, Fibonacci and the ratios for that Guernsey sweater. Though That's closer to what I use um, to know where to start or how wide to make something. Like if I know someone, like say my daughter might be 30, 38 inch or 41 inch or whatever bust, if you are making something for someone for a gift, then... Hang on, let me get up a drink. All you need to know is either you need to know one measurement. They can measure their arm. They can measure their chest. They can measure their neck. Any of those. And you can figure it out from there. So um, the chest measurement is usually the easiest. And that is what I use and consider when I'm making something that's more fitted for someone. So I know where to start, how many chains. And for myself, I, I know that usually starting with um, around 90 chains um, for my neck opening is a size that's going to work out for me if I'm doing a raglan, uh, which I don't do very many of. I love the Ruana shape, kimono sleeve cardies, um, things like that, because I like to layer my garments and maybe throw on a scarf too. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got a lot out of it and enjoyed meeting my family. Thanks. Have a great day.